I want to welcome and introduce Jacqueline Russell to this space. Um, Jacqueline Russell is a Diné writer, coach, and president of Grown Up Navajo, a company dedicated to sharing how Indigenous teaching and teachings and values can be a catalyst for change. She lives with her family in the Pueblo of Tamaya, where she lives, farms, and plays, and makes home with her partner and children. So please join me in welcoming our sister Jacqueline Russell to the space. Welcome, Jacqueline. Uh, yeah, uh, Jacqueline Russell and she touch it in a shake here. Any uh, but she seen to the question that she chaired or uh, Bilagana additional look at your thoughts and I can the look at your thoughts and I can add in Nasha. It's wonderful to be with you all, and I'm so excited uh, to see so many familiar faces. Um, so many people that I miss um, that I can't wait to share space with and hug one day and then also just um, friends from from just different parts of my life and I really really am excited to be here. Um, also really excited because I was doing like a work presentation earlier and I had this really pretty cheekbone beauty like neutral color and then I realized like oh wait a minute I can use like a hot pink color because I'm with some good relatives and um, I, so I'm really excited um, <clears throat> to, to share in this space. And I, um, I'm looking forward to our time together today. It's um, been wonderful to be in community with Native Women Lead and by extension, be in community with all of you. And so i am um, had the wonderful like gift and blessing to be able to share different iterations of these guided um, meditation, like journaling meditation, but also just like kind of coaching facilitation um, programs. And so we can go ahead and get started. So uh, first, I guess just wanting to name uh, that you know, I am connecting to the connecting from the lands of the Tamayama people. Um, this place and space is near and dear to my heart. I've been uh, traditionally accepted here in the Pueblo of Tamaya or the Pueblo of Santa Ana. And as uh, Jennifer mentioned in my bio, this is where we um, play, where we, um, where I'm learning to farm, where it's been such an exciting thing to get to know and hear the stories, the songs, um, and the language of this place. And so, um, being that I am traditionally accepted into this community, it's a, a beautiful responsibility to carry alongside my own uh, connections um, to my land in Donetra. And I think that both of those things coincide together. And I, um, yeah, I think just like coming into this space also want to be in a place of just grounding. Like I'm so excited. I can, I'm talking fast and like my heart is going like this and like feel really like I'm about to take off in a good way and also in a very, very um, antsy way. So uh something that I need is a couple deep breaths and we're going to do a little bit of like we're going to have some spaciousness with like grounding into this and so for right now I would just love for you all to just kind of come into this moment come into your body I want you to take a deep breath and not a fourth breath but just like a, a deeper breath than normal and maybe take another two more breaths just not changing anything about it, but just coming into the ease of like yourself in this place. And say on this third breath, I want you to kind of slow it down a little bit and maybe change the way you're breathing in. So breathing in through your nose for four seconds, two, three, four, and then exhaling one, two, three, four. And we're gonna breathe in again, one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna exhale. One, two, three, four. One more time. And exhale. One of um, my colleagues, Jess Solomon, um, we shared an internship together and she had mentioned how the if you take the root word of the word conspire, it actually means to breathe together. 
And so I love starting off with taking deep breaths, one like as a coach, but also just as a dinner person. We believe in the power of breath and that is evident in the fingerprints, the swirls on our fingertips and the swirls that we have in the back of our head, that these are all reminders of that first sacred breath that we breathe into ourselves when we first entered the glittering world, which is the world that we as Diné people believe we are inhabiting today. And so when every time we breathe with that intentionality, we are met with both like our connection and alignment to our life force, but also our connection and alignment to each other and the living world around us. And so our breath is such a profound way of connection. And I also want to give um, connection and, and call in the ways in which there are many of our relatives, and I'm thinking specifically of our um, Black and African American relatives, our Afro Indigenous and Black Indigenous community members who um, continue to face the realities of living in um, a world that is so violently aggressive and the, the need to connect with breath. Um, and how important that is to both fight for justice, for collective liberation, and also the amplification of indigenous sovereignty. So the breath in my eyes is so connected to, to all of our work, but also to all of our lives. And so <clears throat> I want to go ahead and start um, in a continuation of, of sharing some slides. And let me just get, we were, I was sharing the slides for um, us here from NWL. But let me go ahead and pull up um, my slide. So just give me a second. <clears throat> okay. All right. And I am going to, let me cue up. I'm going to play a song that I want us to, again, find our breath <clears throat> come into our bodies. Um, I am a, a certified, just a second, let me. I am a certified personal coach and it's been um, one of the modalities in coach or as a modality in coaching really is also about somatics, bringing yourself into your body. And so for those of you, I see some of my former um, coach clients like on this call, one of the things that I continuously ask is like, how does that feel in your body? And you're gonna be hearing some of that language today of like, how does this feel in your body? Um, because so much of our ability to be expansive in our visioning, to be expansive in our dreams, um, and thinking about the ways in which we want to level up or take our business to um, the unseen or unbuilt sites that we envision requires us to be able to be in our expansive self as much as possible. There are many different Indigenous communities, many different relatives who continue to believe in the power of dreams in the ability of dreams to be the ways in which we um, identify, like who was going to be a leader of a community, the ways of um, determining who was going to be a medicine person, the power of our dreams have always guided us. And so it is a medicine that we sometimes have been disconnected from, but also something that we need to continue to cultivate. And I believe firmly that our, our peoples are time travelers. They have known and honed the ability to um, move beyond this particular realm and be able to access portals to other aspects and other realities of the living world. Um, and so the ability of multiversing to exist on different planes is something that is profoundly indigenous and is also profoundly a way um, that we can move forward and create and touch and begin to see the possibilities of our indigenous futures and how they are interconnected. And so um, my invitation to you all in this moment is we are going to, I'm gonna play a song and um, I just want for 
you to reflect upon, you know, where do you hear this song in your body? And just letting yourself again come into this moment, arrive in this place and place yourself within the context beyond this virtual container. So allowing yourself to really um, occupy a place of possibility. So let me get this on the screen and All right, so I'm going to play music. If, if music, if the music isn't, if you're not feeling it, you can always turn it down and I'll give you a cue when it's time. It's going to be about four minutes. And again, you can get comfortable if this means you need to lie down, if this means you need to stand up. My, my hope is that you're able to just, again, be in yourself right now. There's, there's nothing else you need to do. In coaching, one of the things that can be challenging for folks, especially I think for indigenous women because of the many ways that we are, we both choose and are, I think in some cases required or demanded or called upon to occupy leadership roles in our family. We are so used to moving swiftly from one thing to another, to another, to another, to another. And there is, not always enough time to arrive, to arrive. And I don't mean just physically in a space, but like to arrive in our body. And so when we're able to tap into and ground in the somatics and the understanding of our body, it can be a floodgate. It can be a floodgate of recognizing like what you're feeling of both good, like goodness, and also things that you are have been pulling at, um, like begging for your attention too, with like in in your body. And so I um, would love for those that feel compelled to, if there's anything from that um, that reflection and that exercise of just like arriving in space and arriving in your body, you know, where did some of you feel and hear the song in your body? You can drop that into the chat. So Jennifer says she felt it in her throat. Bobby identified, I felt it in my head and heart. Um, uh, Joni shared um, in hands, heart, breath, forehead, and shoulders. Bobby underscored throat. Cassandra noted throat, heart, solar plexus, chakras. So it's interesting too that like uh, there's a lot of resonance of like throat is coming up a lot, right? Um, Nanaba mentioned my heart and my throat and then top of head. Um, I'm seeing temples and forehead, heart, space and breath. Um, hands, chest, shoulders. Yeah, so just appreciating um, when, uh, when we're arriving, when we're grounding in space, that it's really doing so like without judgment. You can hold curiosity, you can hold um, whatever emotion you want, but to do so in this place of, of just openness. And my hope for our session together today is that that openness of being in our body and being able to be in this place will allow us to conspire to both breathe together, but also to dream together, to be in our bodies together from all across Turtle Island, from everywhere we are. And I think when we're in this particular um, configuration, it's also, I invite you to share in, in the chat as much as possible, um, as much as you feel comfortable to. And one thing I left out, and my apologies for this is that, you know, um, in coaching, you are always at choice. And also in Zoom land, you are always at choice, right? There, you're not getting graded. <laughs> there is no, nothing in terms of um, performance that you have to achieve in this webinar. But if it's just listening, whatever that looks like to you, you can be here and be in this space. 
Um, but I say that to say is that you get to choose how deep you want to go. And this is really from a place of grounding in sometimes if you're having a hard a hard day if things are hard in business in life and as indigenous women those things like just weave together like so naturally um it may feel good to just stay on the surface it may be what you need to stay on the surface and sometimes um this you can come into a space like this and be inspired and be able and willing to do deeper excavation or deeper um, acknowledgement and just really kind of dig into yourself and, and get into like what the whys. Um, and if that feels like your capacity, please do so. So that is what I mean by being at choice is that I want you all to, to uh, engage in this session as, as mindfully as feels comfortable to you. Um, so I am going to switch and we're going to go to this uh, presentation real quick and it's just a couple of slides really for just some visuals of um sometimes we need to look at something that's like pretty <laughs> okay so we all talked about this um or shared through this like where did you hear this song in your body and really i wanted to start this with just self-appreciation I wanted us to take a moment to yes, be expansive, yes, arrive in our bodies, but also to just appreciate ourselves um, because we don't always get a chance to. And we also, I think as um, don't get a, a space to just like give ourselves props. And so that that song is one of my favorite like pump up songs because it allows for just that ability to like to hear someone say good job. And I mean, it doesn't hurt that it's like Alicia Keys who has like a beautiful voice. Um, and so what I, what we're gonna kind of step into and um, if you have the the, the note-taking pages from NWL, um, if you have a notebook, um, <clears throat> if you don't have that and you, and you don't feel like you need to write it down, cool, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, but our first reflection, and we're going to take about, let's see, about, um, let's say like 10 minutes or so to just allow um, for this reflection of, a, let's say five minutes. Yeah, we'll do five minutes. What idea has been keeping you awake with curiosity? This is in relationship to your business. I know that we're, I would love in the chat if you can drop, um, into the chat, like if you're coming from being a new business owner, if you've been established, like what level of business you are um, and you are a part of today and like what hat you're wearing, I guess is the best way to put it. Like, what are you repping? So that we have kind of some context so you can drop your business name and your stage of business into the chat. And I also say that you can, if you're also like, if you're an established business owner and you've been thinking about a new venture, drop that in the chat if that feels comfortable. This can just be a few words. This is not, I'm not asking for the why you do business um, in, in the chat, but I would love to just hear a little bit about like who's in the room. So <clears throat> that we can paint this picture. The reflection question that you're gonna kind of sit with next is, what idea has been keeping you awake with curiosity? And I say curiosity because I want this to be generative. I want you to be in a place of abundance. And I think sometimes um, we can get caught in the place of what's not working, like what we need to fix. And um, there's time and space for that. But what I would love for now is just what it, what idea has been keeping you awake? And this is for you to reflect with like on your own. And so let's go ahead and see, like, I see that there's some sharing. Okay, cool. So I have somebody who's saying their senior show has their mind going all the time. Yeah. What other, um, so in the chat, you can drop into the conversation let me know like what business you are coming from, like what, yeah, what did I say? Like, what? who are you repping today? Um, yeah, so see Narisa and uh, thank you so much for dropping in. I see Joni and 
Colleen, awesome. Yay. Yeah, so feel free to like drop in some information into the chat to just share who's in the room, what's the chance to kind of put your your business out into the world to give it some love and let people kind of just like give some good like sprinkles of positivity on it. <clears throat> awesome, Shiny Moon Creations is in the house. Canyon Production. Hey, Emily, so good to see you. Awesome. Fantastic. So I am, I'm wondering, Jen, are you able to share music on your end? Do you have that capability? If not, I can pull some. But we're just going to take five minutes and I want you to sit with this question. So what idea, and this can be multiple ideas, if you want to just like, these are the things you've been really excited about. I, this question came because there are a couple different ways that I want Grown Up Navajo to grow in the next like 18 months. And so I'm like, oh, like I'm curious, like what this looks like in a group sphere. Like what are people wanting to grow in their business and in their work? And so, uh, yeah, I'm, this is, that's the, the place of which like this, um, this is coming from. So the next question you have like some thoughts around, we're going to get ready to do like a little bit of a group share out, which is going to be exciting. We'll do some breakout rooms in a bit. So you get to know each other um, and also get some, yeah, just some community in this reflecting. So the question that I want you to kind of continue with is you've named one, probably a couple of things that have been keeping you awake, that you've been kind of excited about, bubbling about. Um, there's been some ideation around and, and definitely like curiosity. So my next reflection question that I'd love for you all to sit with is to begin to think about like embodying this vision. So if you imagine like whatever it is that you named from the previous question, like what becomes possible when you accomplish this? What becomes possible when that, whenever it is that you name, say you, um, you land a client. I saw that a couple people have like products like cosmetics and a fashion line. Say Say you, one of the things that you've been really curious about has been a new partner in a retail like placement of carrying like your products. And so what becomes possible when that happens within a couple different different frames? So I want you to think about it from the place of what becomes possible in the next six months? What becomes next, what becomes possible uh, when this occurs and what is made possible in the next year? So first, just kind of sitting with like, what becomes possible when you accomplish this? Whatever that was that you named, and maybe um, it might be helpful if folks um, want to drop into the chat, what what idea has been, or what part, whatever you feel comfortable sharing with, because I know there's always like hesitancy of like wanting to keep things um, close, but I'm curious, like, what idea has been keeping you awake with curiosity? If you want to drop that into the chat um, so that people can see some aspects um, of like what people have been thinking about. And from whatever it is that you named in the previous exercise, you want to then think about what becomes possible when you accomplish this. And I'll drop this chat. <clears throat> Yeah, so Jen, thank you so much for dropping that into the chat. What idea has been keeping you awake with curiosity? So you can feel free to drop into the chat your answer to that. So one of the things that I would love for you to then think about is that then what becomes possible, right? What becomes possible when what you named like in the chat becomes real? Like what happens, what shifts occur that you can begin to name that you see happen within the next <clears throat> six months, within the next 
year, within the next 18 months. And when you're thinking from this particular place, I have a slide. Um, when you're thinking from this particular place, I also encourage you to name, like, what does then that, that feel like? What does that feel like in your body, in your life? How does that shift like your everyday? What ways can you begin to think about what's possible from your senses, from the fact that like maybe it changes the fact that like now you can purchase a home. Maybe it changes the fact that like you can upgrade your car into something like that has better gas mileage. So you're, you know, whatever this is, like how does this one thing change a circumstance or possibility in your life and begin to see it over the course of time to begin to see like what becomes possible so that you begin to see these measurable markers in your life for the next six months to a year to 18 months so that again it's a way of beginning to visualize but also like like deeply visualize like what this looks like. Um, so it's not just something that's on a page that like you're hanging up or in like your planner, but is really something that it, that you will be able to feel it. You'll be able to recognize it when it's happening, when you're able to see like, oh wow, like I created or did the thing that made these shifts occur. Because sometimes, and I speak from experience, like using I statements, like I don't always know when the thing that I have been asking for arrives, that sometimes I'm so not in my body or so not in my element, not in alignment, that I can't actually see like what's in front of me. And <clears throat> we'll talk about accountability as we kind of check out, but the idea of I'm grateful that I have really a, a counsel for a greater Jacqueline that like works, <laughs> supports me, including my partner who is able to be like, actually this thing that you're like ignoring is something that you named a year ago, two years ago, last week. And here it is, like, have you considered that this is actually it? And so I want to like, this is like the practicing of acknowledging that there are things that are for you that are simply waiting for you, but the ability of being able to identify these things of, of how this begins to feel and look like and, and um, what is made possible when you begin to accomplish it, that we can help, I guess, get ourselves ready to accept these things and hold these things. My hope for you all is to like leave with a promise to yourself, a promise to yourself to see um, some action steps through to help you achieve that vision. Jennifer had shared that the following um, webinars and sessions that are going to be unfolding with Native Women Lead are going to build upon the business model canvas and which really connects um, to the conversations around business plan and like leveling up. And so really using this as a, a jumping off point and activation for that pre-work ahead. And so I'm, I, I'm assuming if you don't hear about it today before we close, you're gonna hear from Jennifer and the team at NWL about what the arc of this virtual series is gonna look like. And so this particular session was really meant to be a visioning space, a, a grounding, but also a place that my, my hope and our hope as Jen and I kind of conceived it is that it can be a space where you begin to catalyze what is next for you. And that requires us to really match intention with action, right? And when we're able to do that, that is what builds like the dream. That is what makes us um, able to achieve. And so that requires us to like get our hands dirty, to like plant, plant corn, to not just plant the corn and set the intention, but also to like care for it, to be in the field, to like protect the um to protect the corn to like work the field to irrigate all of these like metaphors for tending to that which we want to grow and so the next phase of like our session is really just to spend some time to like name and identify the three next steps you can do to like make 
the intention happen. Um, and maybe it's not complete in three steps, but that these are the next three things. And what I invite you even more so to do is do this from a place of what is, <clears throat> what will this look like? Um, but where's my, where does my question go? What are the action steps that will help you do this with ease? So not necessarily from the place of like, uh, we have to start with the hard stuff and this means I need to get, you know, financial funding for, you know, thousands of dollars, but not there. Like, what are the things like to do this with ease? What will it look like? And those are the places in which like, I want you to start with the next step so that way then we can begin to actualize and catalyze the vision that you are setting forth today. So we can go ahead and um, you can take a few minutes and uh, note this, and then we're gonna get ready to um, have one more question for you. And then we're gonna begin to, um, I guess here's some wrap up from Jen. Jen, did you want to do some closing comments? We didn't talk about that. I just assumed. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Jacqueline, and thank you for kind of mapping out the journey that we're planning on taking this year with our virtual programming. Um, that is something that we're excited about. So we um, had the intention to start off our year with visioning, goal setting, and activation. So that way we can start thinking about what elements we need in our business model canvas or your pitch decks or any other identify or any other needs that you all identify. So, you know, to come back to the prompt, I drop the prompts into the chat box. Like what are the next three steps you can take to make this vision happen? And then the, the follow-up question or the framing for that our, my hope for you is that you can think of these next steps as like, what are steps that are filled with ease? As we, as you identify them, as you begin to think beyond just those three steps, my, my question or checkout as a group is really to begin to think from a place of accountability. Like how will we in this container know that you took action toward that vision? And so I think that in coaching, we use the mechanism of accountability as one to help coach partners understand their, their own power and wisdom and capacity to actually create the trains and change and transformation like in their lives. Uh, the space of where you're at, if you didn't have time to finish like your thoughts to answer the question on the screen around the three steps, like you can go ahead and like jot those notes down and uh, begin to uh, make, uh, yeah, set the intention to achieve those um, pieces of your vision. And then I dropped into the chat the follow-up question. You know, you met a few folks in the groups that you all um, got to network around and share a little bit of like your ideas with. Um, if you, I know there are a few people who stayed behind in that. I invite you to share your, um, your experience, like your vision with those in whether that's in your office or in your family, just to be able to begin to like speak it into existence, which I think is such an important part of the, the movement um, in, in our everyday, the ability to be able to call in the power to move these um, pieces. So again, my la our last question for our time together is something that I hope we can do in the chat as a way to like close out our session and begin to again, frame our, our time in, um, in and around taking accountability for what we want to see happen. There are so many things that you all dropped into the chat that our world would be made better by and like be made more beautiful, more truthful, um, more just by. And so I really encourage you all to um, be able to like put that into the chat. So I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops, I doubled the question, which I think we're gonna go with that. 
So again, you can share in the chat how we know you took these steps toward action. So you can begin to populate that and we'll do a closing breath and we'll close out our time together today. Wanting to make sure that we honor time. If there are um, any people who want to share, um, we can do two people who, if you want to share um, on camera or on mic, we're more than welcome to, to make that space too. So if that feels like more appropriate, if you wanna take that leap and step into it, you're invited to. My name is Janelle Toledo. I'm here in Albuquerque and I put down online fashion shows and my thinking with that is just for, to build my business up and to get um, engagement. I want to bring clothing production back to Native American communities. And so with that, I mean, I've been posting for like a year and I get zero, like almost zero engagement. And so I really was thinking that if I could do that, you know, if I could like reach more people somehow and have them collaborate and show their designs, then it would get more interest in the whole um, idea of having um, clothes produced in Native American communities instead of sending them to, you know, wherever they <laughs> make clothes at, you know. And it's so that's that's my idea. And so you can follow me on social media. That would be great. And you guys can check up on me. You can like my stuff and, you know, help me out. Um, but as well, you know, you can follow along and um, help me to get there, I guess, because that's the main thing is just having the audience that I struggle with. Thank you, Janelle, for sharing. I see some amazing and brave folks saying that they're gonna, so I see Cecily shares that they're gonna host a, a dream day um, session next week, next Friday. Um, she'll follow her joy and not get wrapped up in per perfectionism. You will know, cause I will host the event and share about it on social media. And Joni shares uh, as her first, uh, net, her, one of the three steps, journal a draft of what I'm thinking for um, her article and submit. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you for sharing your uh, contact information. Emily shares, pray more and make offerings. Be consistently, be consistent by showing up for the land and planting seeds physically and metaphorically. And three, provide more accessible educational opportunities, materials and resources to support those around me. Beautiful. There's some really incredible um, actualizing that's happening, and I encourage you to be able to share with those in your life people um, who you feel are part of, like a council for a greater you. Um, so always having like five people in your corner who serve different purposes, who can help you like not only just ideate, but also like hold you accountable. So share with those folks in your lives to begin to like name some of these things that you want to bring into existence, because I firmly, firmly believe like our um, communities and our people um, and the world is going to be made better by so many, all of your ideas um, that you've shared. So Thank you all so much. You can uh, find me at Grown Up Navajo and at, um, at Jack Russell on Instagram and mostly on Instagram. And um, let's see, I think that's it. So thank you, Jen and Native Women Lead for the invitation to uh, share in this session. I'm really excited to see how it unfolds. And I love Lisa's idea of having a follow-up uh, event like this in the time frame that we've uh, indicated. So like in six months and a year and 18 months to also hold like each other accountable. So I'm down with that. <laughs> so thank you all. Take care, everyone. Jen, it's yours. Yes, thank you, Jacqueline. We appreciate your love and your energy today. Um, thank you all for coming and taking time out of your busy days to be with us today and wishing you all the best on your visioning and manifesting and have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you next month. Have a good day, everybody. Take care.